Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Take Two Fishing. My name's William, and this is a much overdue video. I've been gone, man, for like a month and a half because my laptop decided to take a dump. At the worst time possible, when I'm due to get a video out, it decides to take a dump. <sighs> so I'll take my laptop over to Matrix Computer in Franklin, Kentucky. Brian, hats off to you, my man. You have saved the day and gotten me back over here on YouTube doing my thing. So if you guys live in the Franklin, Kentucky area, you need a good PC guy. You live relatively close and the drive's not too far. I would highly recommend Brian over at Matrix Computers. I think they also have a location over in the Clarksville area. So there you go. My shout out to Brian. Brian, I appreciate you, brother, no doubt. So I've got everything out in front of me. You see, I got a couple molds and some colorants, uh, temp gum, some plastic, blending block, uh, dual injector, Take-Two Baits decal. Speaking of Take-Two Baits, if you guys have not checked out my website, please do so. You can find that at take2baits.com. Take the number two, fishing.com or baits.com and they'll lead you to the same website if you guys have not checked me out over on instagram please do that as well give me a follow give me a like on my stuff hit me up over there if you look at something and you're interested give me a shout and i'll get you hooked up so i'm ready to make some soft plastic baits we're going to be making a red shad and a lot of people do these differently me personally i like using a red pearl uh, with a black pearl laminate and I also like to throw a little bit of black glitter in my red pearl looks like looks better that way to me uh, done some stick baits not too long ago and they turned out really well uh, for a customer he wanted a uh, stick bait with some salt added and uh, but he his request was is throw some red glitter in the black so it was different but it looks good so there's no such thing as a mistake when it comes to uh, making soft plastics as far as colors go they're just new colors, and, I'll, and you'll hear multiple people say that. Um, but man, listen, I'm looking forward to getting this video going. I appreciate each and every one of you that stick that still stuck around, <laughs> even though I've been out as long as I have, um, no doubt for sure. So man, let's get this show going and make some red shad 10-inch curl tail worms. All right, so um, the way I like to do it is I like to start out with at least one cup of soft plastic. Now, this is actually 152 uh, soft plastic by Bates Plastic LLC. If you guys have not checked them out, please do so. Tell Butch, William said hello. Uh, he is, he'll definitely get you hooked up. Um, then next, I want to use a black pearl here. Um, now... Black pearl is is it's a lot different from a black pig, uh, pigmented product, a liquid liquid black. So on black pearl, I know for a fact that in one cup, um, a good a good portion of black is going to be needed because it it's not as dark as you think. Uh, at least that's been my experience. I like to put that uh, that pearl in while my plastics cold i have done it while it's heated up to simply adjust and of course you got to work out all the clumps and we'll get that done here directly don't want to bore you with that so the next thing is <clears throat> i'm going to use a red pearl and also again i know on the last time that i used my red pearl that one wasn't quite enough it was close but it wasn't quite enough so i'll definitely try to go a little heavier on my red as well so that was as you could see that was a that was a good two quarter teaspoons relatively heaping um and it looks like about a cup and an eighth of plastic so you can call it a cup it's a little over it's all right though 
but what I'm hoping to accomplish is a good steady blend with pearls. See, it's a little bit different. So pearls don't seem to overtake one of the other colors like when you're using just simply simple pigments together. So if you shoot with a white, let's just say I was shooting with white and red. Oh man, I've, I've run into so many difficult problems where you gotta find the right temperature. You gotta have the right viscosity or the same thickness on your colorants and just, it's a battle. So listen, there's no one particular person that's hand shooting baits that has figured out the method um, everyone struggles with the same thing. Um, I have actually uh, reached out to other guys that make soft plastics and say, look, I, I've, I've been faced with this challenge. I can't seem to get through it. I've shot hard, uh, hotter. I've shot uh, cooler. I've changed everything I could possibly change. It, it could be the mold. It can be your injector uh, blending block. I've had an issue with a blending block before where colors actually started mixing in the blending block. So there's a lot of challenges out there. So don't uh, don't give up. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Uh, fight the good fight. And just realize that you're, you're not going to be alone in this battle. Um, all right, so here we got, like I said, roughly about a cup and an eighth. I went over just a tad bit of the red pearl and the black pearl. Next thing we got to do is get these over to the microwave. And here's why I do it is, is I warm them up just a little bit. All right, and then I do the degassing process. Uh, they seem to degas just a little bit better. Pearls, for me, seem to degas just a little bit better once they've been warmed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is throw them in the microwave, get them warmed up a little bit, move them over to degassing chamber, and then we'll be back over here to shoot some baits. All right, so we got them in the microwave. We've set it up at five minutes. And we'll let it run down about two and a half minutes. We'll pull those out. Give them a little stir, pop them back in, and we'll, we'll check the thickness. We don't want them to get too thick before they go in the gassing chamber, degassing chamber. Uh, if they get too thick, then you'll just you'll fight that fight. Then you might as well go ahead and reach that complete heated up spot where everything's just mixed nice and neat, which is about 350, 330, 350, and then try the uh, degas. So I definitely want to wait for about two, two and a half minutes. So we'll take them out, we'll stir them. Then we'll get them in the degassing chamber. I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. All right, so <clears throat> got my plastics here. Ran them through the microwave for about two and a half minutes. And we'll just get these set down. And we'll start the degassing process. And then we'll pop them back in the microwave and get them cooked up the rest of the way. Um, and we'll try to shoot these probably in that neighborhood of mm, 3.30, 3.40. So give me a few more minutes, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've come out of the degassing chamber, back into the microwave. I'm gonna give this just a little stir. It's starting to get there, it's a little thick. So we know we still got a little ways to go but it does look good. That's a nice looking color. It's gonna look good. <clears throat> Check out the, the black here. The black's definitely a lot thinner. So I'd say it's probably beating red. The cooking so the black was good as well so we'll get these back in the microwave and get them cooked up a little bit more all right so <clears throat> as we're finishing up on the plastics which are currently sitting over in the microwave i just want to show you that on the curl tail worm this particular mold there's actually no top or no bottom. So you don't actually have to be specific about red side, black side. Just as long as you start the shooting process and keeping your block in that same location 
and don't allow the block to turn while you're actually injecting, then your lines should show up pretty much patterned completely down the bait. Where in other cases, you've got, say, a three inch crawl, this actually has a top plate and a bottom plate. So if we were wanting, let's just say, a black top and a red bottom, then we know that we then have to shoot a black top and a red bottom. So what I actually done was, is I placed a small letter B here to distinguish the top from the bottom. So, but in this scenario here, we won't have to actually be concerned about which way the plastic shot into the mold, just as long as we don't turn our block while we're actually shooting. So let's pull these out and give them a look over. And we're at 320. Well, I was going to say 320, but we're not. So we're actually at about 300 on the black, which is going to have to be just a little bit warmer than that. Um, I like to shoot pearls sometimes, depending on which mold I'm shooting. Sometimes I'll actually shoot them a little bit higher in temp, more, more like that 350 mark. But I've been successful shooting pearls at 320 as well. Uh, that is about 317. So my red is just a little bit hotter than my black. So we'll get both of these back into the microwave, but we'll pull the black out. Uh, we'll pull the black out last. And that way the, uh, the black will hopefully get closer to the same temperature. So once we get them back out, we'll add some black glitter to the red and then we'll shoot. So I've had a lot of people to ask me whether to use a drop-in style thermometer or a temperature gun. So here's the thing you have to keep in mind. When you're using a temperature gun, you're really doing a surface reading unless you stir it up and then you get a more idea of what the center of that plastic temperature is. So I'm showing 328 with it stirred up, 329 with it stirred up on the surface. Where the drop-in temp reader takes a little bit longer because it's actually submerged in the, in the product. But at the same time, with it being dropped in, waiting to get that temperature, it takes a little bit longer. So we're showing 343 with a drop-in style, 345 with a drop-in style. And then if we look at our black, so it's, it's hovering right there around the 340 mark. 342 is where it's hovering. So we know core-wise that we're closer to a 340 mark. Stirring this up, we're showing it to be 322 as well. So you're going to get a more accurate reading when you've got an actual drop-in thermometer. Um, so at 320, let's see if we get this and stir three, 336. And I think my black is gonna give me a hard time here. Here we go, 320. 320. Man, I think I'm good to shoot right there. I actually am pretty certain I can shoot both of these right here. The only way to really find out how to do it and see what happens. So what we'll do is, is we'll go into the cup, we'll draw up, we'll lean back, we'll burp till we see a steady flow of product coming out of the end of our nozzles, which I do. We'll put our blending block on, we'll secure our blending block, and then what we'll do is we'll bring it over here to the table 
and then we'll shoot just a tad bit on the table and then we'll actually shoot the mold You know, hold just a little bit of pressure there afterwards. Fill the sprue up. Top it off. And of course, like I said, it's it's all pretty much just trial and area uh, area tri trial and error with uh with with all colors. I mean, truthfully, it really is. I mean, what you do today may very well not turn out to be the same tomorrow. Uh, though uh, consistency does pay off not to change routines not to change habits you know just keep everything the same uh, and once you start learning what works best make a note whether it be a mental note or physical note and don't change it now this is actually a red shad stick bait that i shot the other day for a customer and he actually like i said i normally put black in the belly but on the opposite side, on the black, uh, he actually wanted red glitter. So as you can see, a little red glitter in the black, a little black glitter in the shad color. So I think that looks great. Um, so let me get all of this mess cleaned up, and then we'll break these molds open, and we'll see what we got. All right, so now for the moment of truth. And we'll see how these turned out, these 10 inch curl tail in a red shad. Um, I've shot these before, but like I said, you never really know <laughs> what to expect until you've literally cracked the mold and looked at the bait. But we'll start by saying, nice. So the pearl red showed up really well on one side. So now, let's look at the other side. There you go. Man, that is a great line right there. Perfect. I, man, I like that right there. That, that bait will fish, man. So, if you've ever heard the saying, that dog will hunt, this bait will fish. And you can just look at the sprue and how everything just looks like it really came together good as far as alignment. Um, set them aside and crack open the other one. And like I said, man, you just really never know what you're going to get until you crack them open. And, you know, this in here could be completely different from the other one. Um, and hopefully that's not the case. Get this other one cracked open. Let's see what we're looking like. Don't want to ruin a surprise. So get these spun around. Here we go. <clears throat> so there again, pearl red really turned out to be nice. And get these pulled completely out again and see what they look like up close. So I'll just pluck one here and here goes your red pearl, clean laminate line into your black, back over into your red pearl again. So man, what what a great combination of colors if you ask me and like i said you know everybody's everybody's gonna do something just a little bit different when it comes to making baits someone's gonna add you know a certain glitter and someone's gonna add a a certain a certain pearl or a certain highlight or a certain color so there's really no right or wrong way when it comes to making soft plastics um, unless you're just trying to do something that's just an exact match, uh, which can also be difficult unless you literally have the bait um, there in your hand. You know, I've, I've seen a couple people on YouTube that'll actually take and they'll look at a picture and they'll try to match. And that's not an easy thing to do because, you know, I color, I 
custom color match jigs all the time and that it's a struggle to be able to get that uh, precise through a picture so when you send that bait back to the customer you want the customer to look at it and say man i'm impressed uh, so here you have it my version of the red shad and again if you want to write this down i used two tea, uh, two quarter spoons heaping of the red pearl and two heaping spoons of the black pearl just a little over a cup of plastic you, you can call it a call it a cup and an eighth to be a little bit more precise but the same effects would probably be uh, just as close there with a one cup of soft plastic but listen guys man this is like i said a much overdue video i definitely appreciate you guys tuning in no doubt without you uh, this channel would be a flop so because you guys tune in and watch man i appreciate it. so do me a favor hit the like button hit the subscribe button turn your notifications on if you like what you see be sure to leave a comment in the comment section i love seeing your comments and love enjoying or love to comment back to those comments i'm gonna get this right man it's been a while but it hadn't been that long so i appreciate it guys thank you for coming along for the ride and we'll see you next time